So today I'm going to look at how do we with weak wrists, which may be caused from arthritis or strained carpal tunnels, whatever it is that creates your, the weakness in your hands. Um, and the tools that I'm using to cut tiles with. I found that these were not helpful for my hands. They're a bit heavy, but they're awesome. If you have the strength to use these uh, in terms of your wrist because of the weight, they're fantastic. They are compound nippers. These standard, let's um, cut and scrape and crush are very easy for people whose hands work well. I had no hope with these. Likewise with running pliers. I often see people doing running pliers and I think, oh, if only it, I can squeeze as much as I like, it's just not going to happen. But I've come up with this way to make gorgeous little daisies with tiles, because I'm, I'm learning how to use tiles. And this amazing tool, I'm going to call this my little green monster. It's just fantastic. If it wasn't for this, I wouldn't be able to use tiles at all. And plates would be just a pain in the you-know-what. So let's get on with it and see how to make this amazing daisy. I'm using these 10 centimetre tiles, or I think that's ooh, maybe five inches. Let's have a look. Oh, sorry, four inch squares or 10 centimetre squares. These ones we get from our local hardware. Um, and really they only have primary and secondary colours, all very boring. So if you want to find the centre of your, your tile, just draw a line across that if you need to have the centre of your tile. Sometimes it's nice to have uh, petals of different shapes and sizes. I'm just going to go with the flow and see what on earth I'm going to create. So the first thing, of course, is draw a circle to the size you want on your tile. So it could be any size. I'm wanting big and bold for my current project. So maximising what I can get out of this tile, you could make it smaller. This is like an old fruit container. And it's just perfect. There's no point in me using this little green monster at this stage because it just doesn't work for me in terms of cutting circles. So I'm going to use the nippers to cut the circle. And when you get to somewhere like this, cut this end bit off so there's less strain on your hands when you go to cut. So now I'm just going to cut that little corner off and it's a nice size, so I'm going to put it to one size and use it later on. And then just follow the line around to cut your circle. Don't make, don't sort of go up here. Do it right near the one you just did. You might end up with a little bit of a scalloping there. Don't worry about that at this stage. You see the little scalloped edge there? Because we're going to just rub those off when we um, get to that part. So just nip around or nibble, whatever uh, words suit your mind, on that black line, beside that black line. But you don't need to be too fussy. There we go. All cut out in a lovely circle. So if you wanted to just to do a circle, then you would smooth those edges and then you'd have a perfectly cut circle. Dead easy to do. Um, and of course, with tiles, you're going to make lots of mess and crumbs. So do sweep them away as you go, but take it gently because there's lots of, um, there can be a lot of dust in it. So if you're concerned or you are making a lot of dust, you may want to consider using a mask. So now we have this lovely circle. We're going to cut it like a pizza with my little green monster. So here's my little green monster and I'm going to cut, cut, break, cut and break. It doesn't like to be have all its cuts done at the same time. So through the centre, get this nifty little gadget, which is just like a vice. So you pop that in there, line this line up with the line marking that's on the tool. 
and I'm leaning it against something because I don't have a third hand and get it to the spot you want and then break and you have the perfect break. Then we'll cut each of those pieces in, in half as well. Same technique, pop it in here, little unscrew. So I, I push it down until it sort of sits snugly in there and then I um, do the break. And then each one of those once more. So I'll continue on to do that and I'll do that offline. You don't want to be bored out of your mind watching me do this. Okay, now I've got all the pieces cut and they're ready to turn into beautiful little petals. So you can arrange them around and they, because it is freehand, all the petals will be a slightly different size, which is absolutely fine for me. So I'll put all the short ones up once I'm finished cutting uh, near each other and uh, it creates a lovely little petal. So how do we do that? Now it's back to the wheel nippers, these. And what I'll do is cut off this corner, this corner, and this corner. So one, two, three. So you can see it's already a different shape. Now I'm going to cut that corner and that corner and shape if I need to. So I ended up doing three little nips on, oh, this one wants a fourth one. And then we end up with this lovely shaped petal. So we treat all of those pieces that we've just cut like that. And then we will uh, smooth over the edges. I'll show you what to do with this. For those who don't have a grinder, I don't have a grinder because I'm sure I'd just grind my knuckles off. Um, and see how easy this is going to be, even with these lumpy bits here and what's um, important to do and not important to do. But let's go and make the whole petal. Oh, sorry, flower. All trimmed nicely, so we can now have a look at what our lovely, beautiful, big, bold flower looks like. As you can see now, I've got petals of all different um, sizes, just slightly different, which is great. Uh, I like it because it adds movement to the flower rather than having it um, everything exactly the same. But that's just me. You'll, you'll uh, work out what the things you like uh, better than other things. And at the end of the day, you're the artist. So there we have our lovely flower, but we've got these rough edges. So what do we do now? That's nice and easy. Let me just move that over and I'll set up my grinding, grinding station. Here's my grinding station. I have a little bath of water. I have a, a, a thing, a bit of wood. It's actually an old bit of wood I lean on. A couple of uh, little towels and the things I want to grind. And of course, the thing to think about is what sort of sanding pads do I need to do this with? Very important. I have two, uh, for tiles, I have two grades or grits of sanders. One is 60, which is rough as rough can be. Would not ever use this on glass in a pink fit. But I need the 200 for the glass. So with these tiles, this surface is made out of glass. And this is all made out of um, some sort of clay thing. So I would use this for the clay and this side for the glass edge. And it, you only need it um, if it's bothering you on, on the clay because once the grout is on, you won't see what's behind it. So you make up your mind. I don't think I'll need to worry about Mr. 60 at all. So I just damp it here. So it's nice and damp. This one I got from a tile supply shop rather than a glass one. So now I'm just going to rub around the edge here to take the scallops off. And you'll see how easy it is. 
So I did two rubs on the point, so that's taken care of. Now I'm just going to do the top of this one, just to take those solid pieces off and make a nice little smooth edge. Give it a rinse, then you'll find a towel and you'll see that that's perfectly smooth. So once the grout is on there, I don't know how well you can see that, you can see that that's just going to be fabulous. It's all lovely and smooth. So proceed with that and do all of your lovely petals. So hopefully you can see those lovely petals all made out of the tiles. This is going on a 3D object, so I'm going to turn this into a motif for easy gluing and um, so it won't slide down or out of place. But when I do that, I take the centre out so it doesn't interfere with it curving around the edge. So to make a motif, you just need some either, I think this is two inch facing tape or um, five centimetre packing tape depending on where you're from and what it's called. I just get the packing tape because it's nice and cheap in Australia. And I do one across, hold it down. <coughs> Excuse me. And then one across the other way. And that holds the tiles really well in place. As a motif, I apply the glue to the back and then just pop it on my 3D work. So there you have it, a pretty easy way for us with weak wrists on making a tile, well, it could be a daisy, it's whatever it is, it's an eight-leafed flower or pizza pie, however you want to think about it, and all ready for gluing. So it will fit very nicely on a 3D shape. So when I glue that, perfect. When the glue dries, I remove the sticky tape and then glue the center in. That way everything is perfect. I hope you enjoyed that. And that takes care of this month's learning theme, which was all about using ceramic tiles because it was something I'd never done before and I thought it might be a great opportunity for us all to learn something together.